My copy of hey. the weather could be verse. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Gary. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. I was talking with a, a group yesterday. These are young kids, second to fifth grade, who are young writers, uh -huh. and and they've all written a book uh, oh, at, at this young age in their in their lives. You know, and uh, it was up in uh, in the Dewajak area, Southwestern Michigan College. Um, and we had a big gathering for them. What a great time that was. And they were so interested, not only in, in of course, everything that they had written, but all of the, the stuff that's in here, and how did you do that, and what was involved. And so hopefully a lot of aspiring authors out there. If we're encouraging young people to write yeah. and write well, mm -hmm. uh, we're doing something right. Well, I told them that the, the way that I started writing poetry, I mm -hmm. guess, was my mom and dad used to play word games before we had these phones, right? Right, yeah. And we're sitting in the car, we'd be on a vacation, and you'd play a little rhyme games and stuff like that. So that's kind of where it came from. Uh, I just, I, I had this idea that when uh, we all started sending text messages that the next generation would be more literate. Yeah. Um, and, and that has not proven to be the case <laughs> yeah. yet. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad when, when I meet young people who enjoy the written word. Right, absolutely. You know? and, and the written word, not just the letter R and the letter U, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so I'm old fashioned that way. Anyway, let's take a look at a little bit of poetry this morning. And a quick reminder that uh, just a little bit later today, from noon until 2, I will be up in Benton Harbor, Michigan. We'll be at the ARS Gallery Arts and Culture Center. I'll be signing books up there. Now, the uh, Blossom Parade ends at 6th Street. One block away from Fifth Street, which you see on the thing there. So you probably don't want to come down through Main Street, uh, Benton Harbor from the west, because that would be the route that they're going to use for the Grand Floral Parade. So come off of M63 from the north down Clock Drive or M139 and go west from there. Uh, and you can get to the downtown area. And we'll be looking forward to seeing you. I'm looking forward to signing a lot of books today and having a lot of fun with, uh, with everybody out there. So uh, a little special treat for you today here, George. Felicia's off this morning, but that's not the big surprise. What's rarer to see is a pair of OGs that both are wearing bow ties. How about that? <laughs> awesome. A couple of, a couple of uh, OGs out there, as Felicia <laughs> likes to call them. And, uh, you know, what can I tell you? Uh, we're clones. Uh, there you go. We, we look a lot alike, and uh, it's like the Patty Duke show, only different. Anyway, let's take a look at uh, our live Skyview camera here in St. Joe, Michigan. You can see the lovely lighthouse out there. Look at how blue these skies are and how clear the horizon is, how sharp that is. Not much moisture in the atmosphere. Even though we had rain last night, it's all cleared out. We've got that clearer, dry air coming in from the northwest. It's 54 degrees, so it is chilly, uh, and the winds are now uh, blowing at 17 miles an hour and gusting up around 25 to 30. So that will feel a little bit cold out there this morning. As we take a look at Michigan City this morning, they're at 52 degrees, and you can see the chop on the water out there. So you do want to be careful if you're out in the boat. Of course, don't get near the piers on days like this where those waves could be coming up. Right now, our radar is all clear. Things are looking great. This is the system that came through last night. We had a number of pictures of the northern lights, and we'll show you those in just a second here, but uh, because of that geomagnetic storm that we've been having. But this came through and kind of ruined the view for a lot of people around uh, midnight to about 3 o'clock this morning. It is now well out of here, and our skies are clearing. We can widen out as wide as you want to go, and look at all the clear skies out to the west of us. That's what's going to be coming in for the remainder of today and tonight, but also for tomorrow, Mother's Day, and we'll start to get a bit of a warm-up as we get into tomorrow, so the temperature tomorrow uh, will be a lot better, and the winds will be down too. Should be a beautiful day. Our temperature trend today will take us only into the low to mid 60s. We expect to hit a high today, probably around 64 degrees, but it's going to feel cooler than that because of the winds that are out there. I mentioned this geomagnetic storm. What is that? All right, so there are five levels to geomagnetic storms from basically just not much, minor, all the way through moderate, strong, severe, and extreme. Well, guess what? The one that's going on right now is extreme. And that's rare. It's only happened a few times over the last several decades, and uh, this is one of them. So that G5 means that you could have many power grid issues that could develop a chance of large-scale blackouts. Now, so far, things have been uh, very well protected, and the power systems and people have a lot of things in place to try to protect them from this kind of event. If you're a normal person just walking around, there's no reason to worry walking around outside. There's no problem with that. Our magnetic field around the Earth keeps us protected from all of this. But what is it? It's solar radiation. Okay, so there's this little spot on the sun here. And these develop in 11-year cycles. The sun becomes more active over an 11-year period. And we're right at the solar maximum right 
brilliant right now. So things very active on our on our uh, surface of our sun. But when you see this little uh, sunspot here, it doesn't look very big. That's 16 times as wide as the planet Earth is. So it's actually an enormous area of activity. That sunspot is a little cooler than the rest of the surface, but it's when the Earth or the uh, the sun's magnetic field starts to shift around quite a bit more than the Earth does. Our magnetic field is pretty steady, but on the sun, the magnetic field shifts quite a bit and you get these flares that occur every once in a while and it ejects a whole bunch of charged particles out into space. They don't travel at the speed of light. Uh, light only takes about eight minutes to get from the sun to the earth. These take a couple of days, but when they get here, they interact with the gases high up in our atmosphere and some of those gases start to glow. You've seen neon, for example, in a neon sign, charged particles interacting with the gas and they begin to glow. So you get the northern lights, uh, the aurora borealis as we call it. Well, this is from Knox last night and we've seen a lot of spectacular pictures. Normally, if we see the northern lights this far south in, uh, in latitude, you might only see these green kind of things uh, on the very edge of the horizon. But look at the purples and the deeper colors that are out there. And this extends all the way down even to Oklahoma. Martin Lowrimore has family down there and got these pictures. And you can see even the purples and the greens as far south as Oklahoma. We even had a picture this morning somebody sent from the Florida Keys where you could see the aurora. That is extremely rare and just tells you how much energy has come from this particular geomagnetic storm. Back to weather here on Earth, and that is a little gusty today. You'll see these northwest winds at 20 to 30 miles an hour. They start to lay down later on tonight, and so things will become a little bit cooler. Winds nowhere near as bad a problem tomorrow. And look, they're out of the south. That will be bringing us warmer air. So as we take a look at future track, those skies clear out. You should have a beautiful night tonight for uh, viewing. If you want to get out and see the northern lights, get away from the city lights. That's where it's going to be best. But for the next couple of days, things are looking really good. Uh, Mother's Day looks absolutely fabulous all the way through the day with a high of 75 degrees. And our next system arrives here probably not until Monday afternoon. And we could get some rain, maybe a few thunder showers out of that. 10 day forecast here. You're looking at a high of 63 today, 75 for Mother's Day tomorrow. Stays warm into Monday. That cools off a little bit. But this is typical May kind of stuff. Not really bad there. You can see highs in the, in the low to mid 70s as we go through the end of the week. So just uh, this.